Hi, Karim Hamazny here. To continue on with our series on dynamic programming, we're going to look at a problem called the rod cutting problem. Now, if a seller had different sized pieces of rod that sold for different amounts, we want to try to maximize the profit made by cutting up a rod of size n. So let's take a look at this problem and dive right in. Hi, and thanks for joining us. Today we're going to talk about the rod cutting dynamic programming algorithm. So, let's describe the problem. Given a rod of length n units, and the price of all the pieces smaller than n, let's find the most profitable way of cutting the rod. So let's say we have this rod here, and the following prices for all the different sizes from length 1 to 8. So say we have a retailer that wants to maximize his profit by selling smaller pieces of the rod. So let's look at a tiny little example of how this works. So let's say the rod has a size 4. The possible cut combinations could be this. We could cut the rod into 4 pieces of size 1. Each piece is worth $1, giving us a total for this kind of cut of $4. Let's say we cut the rod into 2 pieces of size 2. And if each of these size 2 pieces is worth $5 each, then we have a total of 10. Let's say we cut the rod into one piece of size 1 and another piece of size 3. The size 1 piece is worth $1. The size 3 piece is worth 8. That gives us a total for $9. If we cut it so we have two pieces of size 1 and one piece of size 2, each one piece is worth $1 and the size 2 piece is worth 5, giving us a total of 7. And lastly, if we just leave the size of the rod as 4, it is worth $9, giving us a total of 9. The remaining three ways to cut the rod are just permutations of some of the left arrangements. So when we look at this, we can see that cutting it in two pieces of size 2 gives us the most value at $10. So this problem has optimal substructure, and let's go over the proof for that. So let's say we had the optimal solution for cutting the rod C, I to J, where C, I is the first piece and C, J is the last piece. So if we take one of our cuts from this solution, somewhere in the middle, let's say K, and split it so we have two subproblems, C, I to K and C, K plus 1 to J, assuming that our optimal is not just a single piece, then we would have this rod over here with the top subproblem C i to k and the bottom C k plus 1 to j. So let's assume we had a more optimal way of cutting the top part C i to k. We would swap the old C i to k and replace it with the more optimal C i to k. Overall, the entire problem would now have an even more optimal solution. But we already had stated that we had the optimal solution before, so this is a contradiction to our original statement. Therefore, our original optimal solution is the optimal solution, and this problem exhibits optimal substructure. Proven. So let's define C of i as the price of the optimal cut of a rod up until length i. And let's define V of k to be the price of a cut of length k. So how do we develop the solution? Well, the first thing is we define the smallest problems first and we store those solutions in some kind of data structure, like this, which has a price of 1. We then increase the rod length and try all the cuts for that size of the rod, taking the most profitable one. So if we look at this one, and if we cut it into two pieces of 1, then they would each have a value of 1, giving us a total of 2. But if we cut it at 2, then the, then the piece of size 2 would have a value of 5, and we store that in the optimal solution. So we store the optimal solution for this size piece and build solutions to larger pieces from them in some sort of data structure, be it an array, a 2D array, or something along those lines. So our recur recursive function is defined as C of i is equal to the max of vk plus C of i minus k with k e greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to i. And this technique that we're going to use is called memoization. So let's look at an example. 
So up at the top, I've included the lengths and the prices for each of those lengths, and our data structure that we're going to use to store the optimal for each length size piece as we go through the problem. So the base case is C of 1, and that is equal to 1. And I get the value of 1 from this, from this point here. So we go ahead and put that in our data structure, and we move on to C of 2. So C of 2 is equal to the max of VK plus CI minus K, with the range of K being from 1 to 2. So where the range is, where K is equal to 1, we have V of 1 plus C of I minus K, which is 2 minus 1. So we know what V of, v of 1 is from the very top chart. And C of 1 is equal to 1, which we solved in the last step in the base case. So it's 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. Now let's try for k is equal to 2. So that's just V of 2, which is equal to 5, which we got from the top array. We could see that 5 is bigger than 2, so our optimal solution for length 2 is equal to 5. Now let's try C of 3. So the first one where the k is equal to 1 is v of k, which is v of 1, plus v of i minus k, so v of 3 minus 1, which is c2. So we have v of 1 plus c2, which is equal to 1 plus 5, which we got from the last round, is equal to 6. Now let's try for k is equal to 2. So v of k is equal to v2 plus c of i minus k, so 3 minus 2, which is c of 1, is equal to 5 plus 1, which is equal to 6. v3, where k is equal to 3, is simply the piece uh, for, for length equals 3, which is equal to 8, which I got from the very top array. And we can see here that 8 is larger than 6, so the optimal cut is to have no cut at all and just leave the rod of, of size 3 with a value of 8. Now you can see that there seems to be almost an exact match between the top array and the, and the lower array. But this is not always the case. And we're going to see that right now with C of 4. So C of 4 is equal to the max for the range of k equal to 1 to k equal to 4. So let's try k is equal to 1 first. So we have v of k, which is equal to v of 1 plus c of i minus k, which is equal to c of 4 minus 1, c of 3, is equal to 1 plus 8 is equal to 9. Now let's try k is equal to 2. So v of k, which is v of 2, plus c of i minus k, which is 4 minus 2, so c of 2, is equal to 5 plus 5 is equal to 10. When k is equal to 3, we have v of k, which is v of 3, plus c of i minus k, which is c of 4 minus 3, c of 1, is equal to 8 plus 1, which is equal to 9. And lastly, if we did not cut the rod at all, we would just have v of 4, which is equal to 9, which I got from the top array. And here we can see that the highest value is 10. So the optimal solution is to have a size of 2 plus whatever the value is for c of 2. So we put 10 in our, in our second array, our data structure that we're using to keep track of the optimal solutions, and we now move on to C of 5. So the range of k in this case goes from 1 to 5. So v of 1 plus C of 4 is equal to 1 plus 10, which is equal to 11. For k is equal to 2, we have v of 2 plus C of 3 is equal to 5 plus 8 is equal to 13. Just so you know, I'm getting the values for C of 4 and C of 3 from the, from the solutions that we calculated so far. Now let's try k is equal to 3. So we have v of k, which is v of 3, plus C of 5 minus 3, which is C of 2, is equal to 8 plus 5 is equal to 13. k is equal to 4 is, has the value v of 4 plus c of 1 is equal to 9 plus 1 is equal to 10. And v of 5, where we don't do a cut on a rod of length 5, is equal to 10. And here we see we have two solutions, both equal to 13. So the optimal solution has a value of 13. 
Now, let's try c of 6. Here, the range of k will go from 1 to 6. So v of k, which is v of 1 in the first round, plus c of 5, which is i minus k, 6 minus 1, is equal to 1 plus 13, which is equal to 14. When k is equal to 2, we have v of 2 plus c4 is equal to 5 plus 10, which is equal to 15. When k is equal to 3, we have v3 plus c3 is equal to 8 plus 8, which is equal to 16. When k is equal to 4, we have v of 4 plus c of 2 is equal to 9 plus 5, which is equal to 14. v5, where k is equal to 5, is v5 plus c of 1 is equal to 10 plus 1, which is equal to 11. And lastly, if we did not do a cut on the rod of length 6, we would have v6 is equal to 17. Here, doing no cuts to the rod of size 6 gives us the optimal cost, so we can now put that in the array as having the optimal cost valued at 17 for a size length of 6. Now let's try c of 7. The range of k goes from 1 to 7. So for k equal to 1, we have v1 plus c6 is equal to 1 plus 17, which is equal to 18. v2 plus c of 5 is equal to 5 plus 13, which is equal to 18. And v3 plus c4 is equal to 8 plus 10, which is equal to 18. When k is equal to 4, we have v of 4 plus c3, which is equal to 9 plus 8, which is equal to 17. When k is equal to 5, we have v5 plus c2, which is equal to 10 plus 5, which is equal to 15. And when k is equal to 6, we have v6 plus c1 is equal to 17 plus 1, which is equal to 18. v7, where we do not do any cuts at all to the rod of size length 7, is equal to 17. Here we see we have four solutions that give us a value of 18. So in our array, we put the value 18. Now on the last one, c of 8. The range of k will go from 1 to 8. So we have v1 plus c7 is equal to 1 plus 18, which is equal to 19. When k is equal to 2, we have v2 plus c6 is equal to 5 plus 17, which is equal to 22. When k is equal to 3, we have v3 plus c5 is equal to 8 plus 13, which is equal to 21. For k is equal to 4, we have v4 plus c4 is equal to 9 plus 10, which is equal to 19. When k is equal to 5, we have v5 plus c3, which is equal to 10 plus 8, which is equal to 18. When k is equal to 6, we have v6 plus c2 is equal to 17 plus 5, which is equal to 22. For k is equal to 7, we have v7 plus c1, which is 17 plus 1, which is equal to 18. And lastly, by doing no cuts at all to the rod of length 8, we have v of 8, which is equal to 20. Here we see that the optimal cut has a value of 22, so we put that in our array. Now let's see how to split the rod. So for c of 8, we see that, the that one of the two optimal solutions has v2 plus c6 is equal to 5 plus 17, which is equal to 22. So here's my rod of cut 8. So v2 tells us that we're going to have a piece of size 2. And then the remaining is c6, which is the optimal cut for a rod of length 6. When we pull up the optimal solution for c6, we see that we do not cut the, ro the rod length of size 6. Therefore, the optimal way to cut the rod of size 8 is to have a cut of 2 and a cut of 6. Without, the dy without dynamic programming, this problem has a complexity of big O 2 to the n, so it's an exponential algorithm. And for a rod of length 8, there are 128, 128 ways to cut it, or 2 to the exponent n minus 1. So that's where the exponential factor comes in to this problem. With dynamic programming and this top-down approach, the problem is reduced to big O n squared. And that solves the rod cutting dynamic programming algorithm. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.
Thank you for watching. Go to csbreakdown.com for more, subscribe to our videos, and like this. Bye.